Lord. Uh, good morning. I hope everyone is well. Uh, my name is Douglas Lawson. Uh, this is the first time I've preached the invitation. Uh, yes, first time. <laughs> but I still am shaking. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm here with my wife, Jennifer. And uh, we have two boys, uh, eight years old and ten. And uh, we've been in Uganda for about two years now, a little over two years. And we work with a ministry called Water Missions. And uh, we have an office in Jinja, and uh, we're based out of the U.S. And we have ten other offices around the world. Uh, so we seek to uh, provide safe water uh, to people in communities. And uh, we also seek to tell them about the living water. So water is a great way to get into uh, to tell them about Jesus Christ. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we're here. We also have a ministry in uh, Mutai. We uh, fellowship on every other Sunday and have uh, some Bible studies and things like that. Uh, but I've been given an opportunity to, to preach this morning. Our normal pastor, uh, Pastor Terry, is in the U.S. He'll, he'll be back soon. Uh, so uh, thank you for being here this morning. Welcome to the visitors. Uh, as you know, or as I've said, I'm not the normal preacher, and uh, we'll be back. So, uh, we've been going through the book of Ephesians, and uh, this morning we're in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 17. And uh, we'll go through verse 24, uh, but um, as you're finding that place in Scripture, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for uh, the the freedom we have to come together and worship your name in music and in uh, reading your word. I thank you for the opportunity to study your word and have a copy of your word for ourselves. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would take, any way, take away uh, any nervousness I have. I pray that you would speak through me uh, such that your word may be revealed, such that we may be uh, changed, that we may be transformed, and may know, know more about you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, let's uh, start reading uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, uh, So this I say, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. I will stop right there uh, and continue on in just a minute. See, the, the church at Ephesus was predominantly Gentile. Uh, there were not many Jews in the area. And it was obvious that these new believers in Christ were having struggles. They're, they were having a difficult time with Christian life. They were most certainly saved. Uh, Paul was there. He taught them. They were saved. But they were finding it difficult to live the life uh, that they should. Uh, they were going back to their old ways because of the sin that was around them in Ephesus. They were like a small pocket uh, of believers, but they had unbelievers all around them influencing the way they lived. And so Paul warned them not to walk like the other Gentiles that were surrounding them, the other unsaved people that were around them. But see, all of us, I think, have a struggle in our Christian walk from time to time. Uh, none of us live uh, as Jesus lived, as a sinless life. All of us struggle with our Christian walk. The Lord has gloriously saved us, but we have to live in this world. Uh, and in, until we get to heaven, we will have to deal with sin that is around us. And many times our practice does not live up to our position that we have in Christ. See, the Ephesians, they were, they were living in bondage because Satan had total control of the, the system that was around them. Uh, that, this system that they, this world they had been born in and raised in. Uh, and there were, see, there were no moral or spiritual absolutes 
uh, much like the world we live in today. Uh, there are no absolutes. Like, this is absolutely the right way to go. Uh, they, they were living in this world and said, no, maybe you can go this way and it's still okay. See, Paul here explains to them at least four ways the world uh, is influenced by Satan. Is influenced through their mind. We see four steps of absolute uselessness in their life. The first one, you see at the end of verse 17, talks about uh, the futility of their mind. Is the way these Gentiles, these unsaved Gentiles, will walk. It's the emptiness, the ineffectiveness of their mind. Uh, this this is the empty illusion that lot that uh, sin is actually a good thing. That sin is uh, useful. That you can find satisfaction in sin. They were living with that futility of their mind. They had lost touch with reality, with the way things really are. And then second, in verse 18, you see they're being darkened in their understanding. Now, uh, this this is meaning they're they're not having comprehension of the things around them. They have an empty uh, illusion of what's going on. The lost man is uh, has lost perception of moral values. They're not doing what's going, doing the right thing. Uh, so they're having a, a darkened understanding. I think about it sometimes uh, when I'm I have a deadline when I'm doing uh, a design for a water project, and I have a deadline. I have I have to get things done by the next day. So I stay up late at night, sometimes early into the morning. Designing, working on calculations, working on reports, and so I, I go to bed late. My mind is a bit foggy, and uh, so the next morning I wake up, you know, thinking uh, I did a good job, right? But find out I read over it, and I didn't do as good a job as I thought. My mind was darkened with with uh, with the lack of sleep, uh, the lack of understanding, and I think this this is speaking to what's going on around them. They have have confusion. They have a lack of understanding. It's darkness that's in their mind. They're blind to the truth. The third thing you see uh, in, in verse 18 is they've been excluded from the life of God. This is because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Uh, They've, they've rejected God's truth so long that their heart has become hardened. And they are now they are ignorant of God's truth. They, they hear it, but they, they have a failure to be grateful to it. A failure to be obedient to what God said. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. There... They were thinking this the, way, the path they were on, the way they were going was the right way. But at the end, it leads to death. They were not going uh, along God's path. Fourth thing you see is callousness. Verse 19. They, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity we breathe there is no feeling of wrong in what they're doing. They're sinning, but they don't feel any regret for it. They don't have any uh, moral compass that's guiding them. They're enjoying the pleasures of sin, but it will only last for a season. You know, I think about callousness. Is uh, I'm, I'm learning to play the guitar. Okay, When you first start playing the guitar, and you're pressing on the strings... It hurts. Uh, you, your fingertips hurt after you press on the strings for a while. Uh, the first day it hurts. The second day it hurts. The third day it probably hurts worse. But slowly, over time, you start building calluses on your fingertips. And after a while, it doesn't hurt when you're playing the guitar. You can press on the strings, it doesn't hurt. I think that's, that's the way these people were living in sin. Maybe they felt bad when they were starting to sin. So they did it a little more. They felt a little less bad. And over time, they become callous to what they're doing. Sin in their life. And they they fully give themselves over to it. They're callous to what's going on around them. They're enjoying the pleasure of sin, but it's only for a season. So this is the trap 
that the devil has set for the, the whole world. Uh, it's a trap for the unsaved today. And when it goes unchecked, it destroys people. Uh, this way of life destroyed the Romans uh, that, at the time where the disciples were living. And it's destroying our life or our society today. It's the state of lustful desires that are, are eroding our society, are eroding uh, the unsaved today. They're past feeling and living only for pleasure, only for themselves. Uh, now, get this picture. Here are these Christians. They're living in this kind of society. This is the kind of people that are all around them. They're trying to live a Christian life uh, among them. They were saved but they were still walking in some of their old ways. They, uh, so Paul writes to them, and he urges them to live a better kind of life, uh, a righteous way of living, uh, even with this, uh, this group of people that are surrounding them. See, it's obvious from the Word of God and from watching the lives of people that there's only one way out of this situation, and it's through personal salvation. That's the, way, that's the way out of, of these sins that uh, Paul is describing here. It's through personal salvation. Once a man is saved, he has a new spirit inside him. Uh, he has the same old body. And he has the same mind, but he has a new spirit as soon as he's saved. In the body, it, it will be renewed. It will, it will be born again when we reach heaven. We'll have a, our new body uh, when we're taken into heaven. The new birth of the Spirit happens as soon as we believe in Christ. We have a new Spirit. But the mind is can be renewed like the Spirit, but it takes time. It's not an instant effect. The, the renewal of, of the mind takes time. We are constantly renewing the mind. Uh, let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 1 through 3. 1 Peter chapter 2. Says, Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, putting away all those sins, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. So it's talking about growing with respect to salvation. We start off as babes in Christ, but we, we grow. So we're, we're saved immediately, but our mind has to be continually renewed. We have to grow in our walk with Christ. And see, our culture, Satan puts certain things on us. He, he gives us guilt trips. He, he works on our mind. And he's, he's taught us certain things that act like bondage to us, act like chains that are binding us. They bind us emotionally and spiritually, even physically. Uh, Satan tells us lies that, that bind us and keep us from achieving our potential. They keep us from achieving the goal that God has for us. And we can't be the person that God wants us to be because of these things. See, we know that the, the devil is the father of lies, right? He, he's the father of lies. He's the author of lies. And he will tell you anything to keep you from living a righteous life. Uh... The problem is, the cleverest lie, the best lie, is the one that has some truth mixed into it. Right? Uh, if, he, if he told you a lie that was completely out in the left field and it didn't have any truth in it, you would easily recognize it. But the devil mixes in truth with his lie so that it's easier to believe. Uh, it's kind of like going to the, the central market. Maybe you want to buy some fruits or vegetables. And you go up to the vendor and you say, all right, I want, a, I want a kilo of passion fruit. And the vendor gives you a kilo of rotten, stinking passion fruit. Like, I'm not buying those. But if you go up to a vendor and say, all right, I want a, a kilo of passion, and uh, he mixes up some bad, some rotten fruit, and maybe in the bottom, or mixes some that are almost rotten in there, put some good ones on top. And you're more than likely, you're more than likely going to buy those rather than a big bag of rotten right? So, 
the devil does the same thing. He mixes he mixes the truth in with the lie so that we can believe it easier. See, most believers have a desire to do what's right. They have a desire to be holy, to live a righteous life, and change their lives. Their lives. One of the lies the devil tells us to discourage people is that you should be able to change overnight. You, you, you're saved. If you really want to, you should be able to change your life overnight. You should be able to speak those magic words and presto, you're living a different life. A life without sin, without even any temptation. So the devil mixes, mixes that truth in there to get you to believe that lie, to discourage you. He tells you a lie that you should be able to change your life with one act. See, in, in America, we want everything instantly. I think it's coming to Uganda and uh, probably is already here. Uh, certain things we want instantly. It's like having a remote control TV. You, you, you press the power button and you want that TV to come on immediately, right? Yeah. You, you press the channel button or the, the, the guide button. You want that to pop up immediately and to pick which show you want to watch. Or uh, it, it's like having instant tea or instant coffee. Now, who wants to wait three minutes or five minutes for tea to, to steep and be ready to drink? Or who wants to wait on that coffee pot to brew? I want, I want instant gratification. Many times we don't, we don't want to wait. We are impatient. And that's the way we are about change. Many times if, if there's change that's needed in our life, uh, we want things to happen immediately. We don't want to have to wait for our, our minds to change, our minds to be renewed. And we, we think our life should be changed already. It should be changed overnight. See, New Year's is often time for New Year's resolutions. Right? I'm sure many of you sat down and made out some New Year's resolutions. Or maybe even just thought about them. Things that you want to do differently this year than you did last year. Uh, and many people make a resolution to go on a diet. You know, lose weight. And maybe a week later, maybe even two weeks later, they don't see it, a change immediately. So they say, I'm not going on a diet anymore. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. Because they don't see that change immediately. It's like uh, working out. So I'm going to exercise this year. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to have some big muscles. Well, a week or two into it, you feel the fatigue, but you don't see the results. Like, I'm giving this up. Or maybe it's reading through the Bible. Like every day, I'm going to sit down and have a quiet time with God. I'm going to read through the Bible in a year. And uh, you get to you get through Genesis, you get halfway through Exodus, maybe into January, February. Like, this is not cutting. God, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm not doing this anymore. See, we, we want instant gratification. We don't, if we don't see instant results, many times we don't have the patience to sit around and wait for things to change. But in order for us to renew our mind, as the scripture is saying we should, it, it's not a one-time event. It's a continual event. And it takes time. It takes discipline. Uh, look at, let's, let's continue in Ephesians. Uh, chapter 4, verse, starting at verse 20. But you did not learn Christ in this way. Talking about the sinful way uh, in the verses preceding that. If indeed you have heard of him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside your old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. See, he's talking about renewing our mind. Put away the old, renewing our minds, and putting on the new man. The putting off the old man is our former way of life. So when we're saved, we should put away, put off this former way of life. God has created us for something else, something more. 
The second part of renewing our mind is to put on something. We can't just put off, but we also have to put on. And this putting on is uh, the likeness of God. We're putting on our new self. To anyone who is, who is saved can be absolutely renewed. It can be delivered from the old life. God will not save anyone who He cannot deliver. God has given you the ability to, to do away with temptation, to overcome temptation, overcome sin. It's just if we take that, if we take His promises for truth. And as Christians, we are to walk as a new creation. We're no longer to walk as servants of sin. We are no longer to walk as servants of our flesh. We are a new creation in Christ. Satan has been defeated. He's been conquered. Sin has been conquered. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen? And as a new creation, we do not live with the old corruption. Far too many people are running around today claiming they are new creations. They have claiming to be uh, saved, claiming to be Christians, but yet they're still living in the old corruption of this world. They're still living in the sinful life. And so they live and they act and talk just like everybody else that's around us. They're not living any differently uh, in the in the sinful world that's around us. So there's never been a change in their life. And I believe there's there's one or two things, one of two things uh, that's wrong with a person that say, says they're saved but is not living the way they're saved. Uh, the first is easy. Uh, they've never been saved. They've never truly accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's one reason that they act like that. Plenty of people are claiming to be Christians. Plenty of Pentecostals, Baptists, Anglicans that are not truly saved. They may be part of a church, but they're not really saved. The, a famous Southern Baptist preacher, uh, George Truitt, once said, 80% of my church members are lost. Even Billy Graham, he said once that he thought 75% of all professing Christians are lost. That's, that's pretty high. 75%. That's like we have four men here in the front middle. That means three, <laughs> three out of these four men are lost. 75%. Now, I don't believe that. Uh, I'm hoping you know Jesus Christ. Just in as, as an example. But this is a high percentage. That's what Billy Graham was saying. Many people of the church today have no desire for spiritual things. They do not have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. They don't want to get in the Word and find out the truths that God has for them. Because they've never been truly saved. First uh, John chapter 2, verse 19 says, They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. So that's, that's speaking to the fact that we may have people in the church today that they leave and we're hurt. We think, well, they were saved. Why are they leaving? Well, here's saying they went out from us because they didn't really belong to us. Maybe they were not truly saved. They were not really saved. So that's why they're leaving. People are leaving the faith because they were never, never truly saved. The, the second reason I think people are, are not walking the way that they're talking, they're not living the life that they should be living, is because they're just not walking as a new creation. They don't think of themselves as a new creation. Many have never been taught that they are a new creation. They never had anybody come, come along beside them and disciple them. They were saved. They've given their life to Christ. But after that, you know, they've never had somebody come along and say, this is, this is how the Word of God says you should be living. You should live like those around you. You should be living a separate life, a holy life. Many have never begun the walk of a new creation. See, Paul, in Ephesians chapter 4, the second half of that, in essence, he's saying Christians act like Christians. 
act like you say uh, that you are. Act like you're a Start walking as a new creation. In verse 17, he's saying uh, that the, the Gentiles around them, they're in the futility of their mind, the emptiness of their mind. But then in verse 21, he starts to say, if you have indeed been taught Jesus Christ, if you're truly a believer, then put away the former way of life, lay aside the old, the corrupted way of life, have your mind renewed and put on the new way of life. And if, if anyone knew what it was like to live that way, it was Paul. Uh, Paul, he was changed in an instant. You know, before Christ, he was Saul of Tarsus. After Christ, he was Paul the Apostle. Before Christ, he was Saul the Jewish Zealot. After Christ, Paul the Christian martyr. He went from persecutor to preacher. Uh, he went from Pharisee to prophet. He went from someone that was but stone another person, another Christian, or watch them being stoned, to someone that is actually being stoned. So Paul lived a life of transformation. He did a complete 180. And so wonderful things happened on that road to, to Damascus to Paul. He met Jesus face to face, and he was never the same. He became absolutely a new creation. And now he's writing to fellow believers in Jesus Christ to do the same. That we are to walk as new creations, as new people. As Christians, we begin our walk as new creations, but we see the, the corrupt world that's around us, the defiling way, the old way of life, the old life of sin. But we should put away the old, and we should convert. We should walk as new creations, but realize that being saved means that we walk in a new way of life. The old should be put away. And the Christian life is, is not the way uh, that we used to live. In verse 20, he's saying, you did not learn Christ in this way. Paul's saying, I didn't teach you this way. You did not become believers by sin. You became believers by through Jesus Christ. Now we need to put away the old and bring in the new way of life. So let me ask you, do you know him personally? Has he changed your life? Is he real to you? Do you regularly fellowship with him? Or do you simply know him? Do you know about him or do you know him? Has he really changed your life or do you come to church? Do you live the Christian life because that's the way your friends live? Do you really know him? Have you been changed by him or are you a new person? The word conversion is used to describe the change of attitudes and habits, the way you speak, the activities that occur, the things you do. All of these, the word conversion means you're changing all of this. To be a Christian, to know Him personally means that you have a new lifestyle. In verse 22, Paul is demanding Lay aside the old self, which is corrupt, and unclothe yourselves from all of those things. It's like, it's like he refers to it as like clothing. So take off those old, filthy rags that you were wearing, right? All those things that you thought about, you spoke about, the things you did, the places you went. Peel those off. Then you don't stay without clothes on, Right? If you don't stay naked, after you peel all those old things off, you put on the new. God wants you to be clothed in, in His likeness, righteousness, and holiness, and the truth. See, people are afraid to become a Christian because they realize they would have to change their life. Uh, many feel they can never live up to what a Christian ought to do. They feel... There are certain habits in their life that they cannot change. And they're right. There are certain habits in their life that they cannot change. It must be Jesus Christ changing those things within us. It's Some, some people try to clean up their lives themselves before they get saved. Well, it's, it's not like that. 
God wants you to trust in Him. He wants to be the one that changes you. Amen? The only way we can experience a conversion is for us to become a brand new creation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Paul is saying, put off the old lifestyle, put on the new. When a person becomes a Christian, their nature changes, their whole life changes. Sin dies, and the new creation is made. Uh, let's turn to Romans chapter 6, verse 6. <coughs> Romans 6, 6. It says, Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, in order that our body of sin might be done away with us, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. We're doing away with our old body of sin. We're no longer slaves to sin. We do not have to commit the sin any longer, because our old nature, which drove us, has been crucified, is dead. Look at verse 11. It says, Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. We're dead to sin. Start acting like you're dead to sin. Uh, Galatians 5.24 says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. The old nature has been crucified, and we don't have to submit to it any longer. Then, uh, let's we'll, we'll stay in Romans. Uh, in, in verse 24, back in Ephesians, he's saying, All right, you, you put away your old way of life. You're continually being renewed. We continue to have attacks uh, that Satan has on us, doubts that Satan creates in our mind. We must be renewed each day. But we are to put on our new nature, this nature that's in the likeness of God, righteousness and holiness of the truth. This simply means a new man, the new mind, produce a new way of living. This new man does not go where the old man went does not do what the old man did. He does not talk like the old man talked. He does not act the way the old man acted. When Christ is in us, we are a new creation. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, that, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed. Have your, have your mind renewed. When something is transformed, it's not the same way as it was before. It's, it's transformed. It looks different. It acts different. Have, have your mind continually transformed, uh, continually renewed. So let's start 2016 off right let me ask you to put away the old. Put away any corruption that's in your life. Take on the new. Live with a new, uh, a new outlook on your life. Uh, seeing that you can live with sin that's around you. Paul is not telling these Ephesians to run away to another city. He's telling them that you can live as Christians. Say you're Christians and live as Christians within... Uh, Ephesus, with sin all around you. Get away. Uh, you, you don't have to get away to become a new creation, to live the Christian life. You don't have to live that way anymore. Today you can put on Christ. When we're saved, uh, you receive a new spirit immediately. When we go to heaven, we'll receive our new uh, spiritual body. But right now we have to continually Renew our mind so that we be, we can become more like Christ. Amen? So, uh, I'm going to pray, and the, the praise team is going to come up here. But I'll, I'll be down front. If anyone wants to talk about becoming a new creation, accepting Christ as their Savior, I'll be here. Uh, other leaders of the church can come down also. Uh, but...
maybe you are a believer, maybe you are have been saved, but you're not living the way God has really called you to live. Maybe you need to renew that resolve in 2016. Live the way God is saying to live. Do away with those sins. Do away with the old man. Renew your mind. Become more and more like Christ. And I'll be willing to pray with you. Uh, talk with you. You can come down from as well. Right now, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for uh, I thank you for speaking through me. I thank you for your word that we can know more about you and what you desire in our lives. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would change us into the, the Christians, the men and women you want us to be, that you called us to be. Uh, help us to not think that once we're saved, it's all over. Uh, let us not accept the lie of the devil. Uh, let us know that we, we will continue to have struggles. We will continue to struggle with sin, struggle with temptation, but that we can overcome that through uh, renewing our mind, through following you, through being a new creation. So, Lord, we trust in you that you will do that, that you will continue to guide us, that you will direct us in the paths of righteousness so that we may be renewed. First in your holy name we pray. Amen.